Other news today, uh, nine European countries are holding a summit aimed at scaling up wind power generation in the North Sea, this spurred by the fallout of the war in Ukraine and the push for renewable energy. Hosted by Belgium, France's Emmanuel Macron is among the leaders attending. However, wind farms are a source of friction between France and Belgium at the moment. French authorities are planning to build dozens of wind turbines off Dunkirk on the edge of Belgian territorial waters in an environmentally protected area. And the plans are generating significant anger in Belgium, as our correspondent Dave Keating reports. <laughs> In 40 years, this retired Belgian couple has never tired of this view. But in their binoculars, they may soon see wind turbines. France plans to create a wind farm off Dunkirk. It's a disturbing prospect for this small Belgian seaside town, located just two kilometers from the French border. We still have, especially in La Panne, an extraordinarily wide beach with the magnificent view which would deteriorate with these wind turbines. Belgium is only 60 kilometers of coastline. That compares to nearly 18,000 kilometers for the French coasts. This project irritates the mayor of La Panne. Today he is meeting a French counterpart in a town on the other side of the border. The two elected officials share common concerns about the wind farm, in particular its proximity to the coast. A pioneer in the development of this green energy, Belgium is building its wind parks further from the coast. Like Belgium, there is already a project but it is 40 kilometers away in the sea. If the French put it at 10 kilometers and the Belgians at 40, why not make a Franco-Belgian park 30 kilometers away? which would not bother anyone. And France is far from being a pioneer in this field. We're still learning what's happening in other countries. Late to the game, France wants to catch up. But the Dunkirk offshore project also worries environmental associations. The park would be located in a protected area crossed each year by many species of migratory birds. This project is ignoring biodiversity issues, that's all. When you have such an area that is protected for migration and you still allow wind turbines, that means the protection is really paper, but that's it. Belgium has filed several legal challenges against this project. At the same time, discussions are taking place at diplomatic level between France and Belgium. Well, also covering this story today is our science reporter, Shirley Sitbon, and she's with me now. Shirley, um, why are European countries investing so much in offshore wind farms around the North Sea? Why that area in particular? Well, it has uh, many favourable conditions. First of all, a lot of wind, and also it's pretty shallow, which means it doesn't cost as much as other areas. Still, it costs too much for Europeans, and they want to find ways to make it even cheaper. Uh, that's why they're meeting today with uh, many uh, business uh, business people working out ways to produce and to build all of that energy. Uh, so France and uh, five other countries will join the four, four original countries who created the summit last year, uh, centered around Belgium, which initiated this. So the goal basically is uh, to become like the UK and Germany, one of the motors of the uh, wind energy, and to join this uh, network. That's basically the goal, to make, to produce 10 times more energy than we do today by uh, 2050. Uh, so that's basically the goal. The capacity will be 10 times larger. Uh, now, Shirley, though, there are some obvious shortcomings with wind energy, not least it doesn't work when there's no wind and it can't be stored either. That's being discussed by the leaders this week um, when they meet in Belgium. Can any solutions be found to that rather sort of intangible sounding problem? Yes, and we have a map that can explain how this can be resolved. There are many ways to resolve this, but one of the ways to resolve it is creating a network, a network uh, which uh, which actually, yes, we can see now. The, this is a map showing the different projects around European countries, and all these projects can be related. Uh, because since uh, energy, renewable energy, depends on weather conditions, well, a country like Belgium, for example, uh, well, if it doesn't have enough 
enough wind uh, offshore, then it means it, ha it can't produce. Well, if it's related and linked to the UK and to Norway and to France and to various other countries, well, this means there's always energy uh, going through that network, which is one solution. Still, it has to be built. It's just the beginning of this uh, project, but uh, many uh, farms are out there being built. And Shelley, what about the impact of wind farms on the local environment concretely as well? Because we know that in some cases, animals have fled areas where wind farms are being built. How big a problem is something like that? It is a problem, especially now as those uh, farms are being built, because, uh, you know, the building itself generates a lot of noise. And we've uh, heard, yes, we don't want to see those many people, don't want to see uh, the wind turbines on land. They want to see them further uh, into the sea, so they actually don't see them at all. But this means that whales, for example, and other cetaceans are suffering from this because it's basically where they're, they live and they cross through those areas, and sometimes they're disoriented. Uh, and so the many have, have died in recent years. Also, fish have fled the area. Birds, many birds leave these areas. But experts say this is just for now as these uh, farms are being built. Further along, it won't be as bad. And for example, fishing would be banned in those farms, so fish can actually proliferate there. So there's good, there's bad. Obviously, it depends whether you're working on one of these projects and you, you always have a negative side to when you produce energy, uh, you know, wherever it is and whatever kind of energy it is, it's basically finding the best solution. And this can help fight climate change. Shelley Sitbon, thank you.